Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we finished import settings configuration for geometry and texture assets. Before moving on to the next topic, I would like to add one more useful functionality, which is the ability to re-import an already imported texture asset using different settings. This can be done fairly quickly and that's what we are going to implement in today's video. We can reuse the control we made for texture import settings so that we can change them after a texture has been imported. I'm going to put it in the texture editor's texture detail panel below the information about the currently opened texture. In order to do so, I'll add a grid first that will divide the panel in two halves vertically. The top half will contain the texture information and in the bottom half I'll add the import settings control. I'll quickly add a bit of decoration to visually separate the two areas. Next, we add an expander which will contain the import settings. Because we are also going to add buttons for re-importing and saving the texture, I'm going to add a stack panel in our expander. This stack panel is only enabled when the editor state is done. That means that we can't change the import settings when the editor is loading, saving or re-importing a texture. Finally, we can add the texture import settings view here. We should bind its data context to the import settings property of the texture editor. However, this is a new property that we still need to add. Let's head over to the texture editor class and make our changes. As you can see, there is no import settings property defined here. Before writing it, I'll quickly add two new commands for re-importing and saving the texture. We also add a boolean property which indicates that a texture can be saved. Generally, this happens after it was re-imported. Then we add the texture import settings, which is a read-only property. Whenever we open a new texture asset, we'll copy the import settings that were used for that particular texture. Next, we can write the code for re-importing and saving the texture. Both commands will call their methods asynchronously. This way we can keep using the editor while the texture is being imported or saved. Before re-importing a texture, we'll back up its old settings in case it fails to import the texture with the new settings. Then we set the editor state and call texture import method on a separate thread.
When it returns and it was successful, we can read the data that it returned, update the image that's currently displayed and make sure that the new texture can be saved. However, if it failed, we copy back the old settings. We set the editor state to done at the end. I forgot to also copy the new import settings to the texture asset. We do this right after we made the backup. Saving a texture is done simply by calling texture save method. Now we have everything in place except the two buttons for reimporting and saving, so let's add them next. I'll put the buttons next to each other in a stack panel below the import settings view. We bind each button's command property to the corresponding command of the view model. The save button is only enabled if can save changes is true. That's everything for re-importing textures. Let's see if it works. Here we have a 3D texture with 6 images. We can re-import it as a 2D texture array with two MIP levels. And we can see here that it succeeded. Note that we are now able to save the texture. Or we can try and re-import it using a different setting. Here I turned the texture array into a single channel grayscale texture array, which is effectively the same as taking the red channel of each source image and putting them in a texture array. Or we can use a dual channel encoding. In this case, the red and green channels are used. We can even display the texture as if it was a normal map, which it isn't obviously, but we can totally do it for kicks and giggles. And finally we can create a texture cube, which is basically a 2D texture array, except we can sample from it in the shader using a direction vector. We can reopen the texture and since I didn't save it, it's still a 3D texture. We can create a cube map again and save it this time in order to test if that works as well. Which it does and that concludes the asset import settings configuration in Primal Editor. Next time we are going back to the engine code and start working on physically based rendering and texturing. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.